Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 460. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today because here's the thing. When it comes down to getting into business or more importantly, building your cash flow, because see, I know that's why you're here. You want to create cash flow, build cash flow, become a bigger, better, better entrepreneur. This is what we do. There are many ways to make that happen. Now, some of you, if you're like me, you're like, Dude, I, I would love to build some cash flow, but I, you know, I, I'm not the overly talented kind. So I'm not singing. I'm not bouncing no ball. I can't exactly invent anything, but maybe I could buy something. What do you mean, Jay? Well, what do I mean is this? What if you just bought the business, automated the business, made it run without you so that you could then still reap the benefits of the business? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, and I believe I've got a guy that you are going to want to take copious notes from because he's done it not once, not twice, not three times. I'm not even going to go already there. He's got eight multi-million dollar companies that run without him. Yes, that's eight multi-million dollar companies that run without him. That means he knows exactly how to make this happen. In fact, he did so much that he wrote a book about it, he has academy about it, and more importantly today, he's going to tell us about it, and I am, of course, talking about none other than Aaron Muller. So, I hope you're ready to learn to listen, and most importantly, implement the things that you are about to hear. So help me welcome Aaron Muller. Aaron, how you doing? Pretty good, man. I feel so important from that intro. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, if now you've I'm done gonna, something to... eight times, you've affected lots of lives. I would say that a lot of people consider you important. Well, you know what? You at least have the subject matter, my favorite subject matter, cash flow. Uh, I, it's my <laughs> big belief in, in everything I do, and it's it's why I do it. So it's awesome. I love your I love your show, man. Thank you very, very much. Now, this being the first time that you're here, I got to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody else the first time that they're here. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, etc. And I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. Chief among them, as an entrepreneur, I can occasionally envision myself as saving my customer with my products and services, etc. And maybe even occasionally wearing a cape. However, just like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. For example, if we take the story of, say, Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, trying to get good grades and taking some photos. And then one day something happened to him. That thing happened to him and he discovered, oh my goodness, I have some special abilities. And he gets to choose to whether he's going to use them for good or evil. So my question to you is as follows. Before founding the Lifestyle Business Owner Academy, before writing the book, The Lifestyle Business Owner, before having eight multi-million dollar companies that run without you, before the the kids, before everything that you were known for today, what we want to know is, who is Aaron Muller? Wow. Okay. Well, I, I'll, I'll try not to bore you with too much of the past, but, you know, it's, <laughs> no, it no, really no, no, no. The past has got lots of keys in it, though. Yeah, it does. It definitely does, man. Um, so it really starts back when I was uh, in fifth grade. Uh, my parents ended up um, moving to an island in the San Juans, which is in the um, Seattle uh, area. 
And they, you know, everybody on that island worked. It was not one of those islands, you know, it's not one of those places where, you know, the kids stay at home every day. I mean, it's in the summertime you work. And so I started up a little shrimp business in fifth grade. And, and what I would do every single morning at uh, 7 a.m., I'd go, I'd live 10 miles out of town. My parents would go to the marina to run the marina. Mm. And I would, uh, I would go out and catch shrimp at 7 a.m. every morning for a couple hours. And then I would, uh, at the end of the day, um, I would go home and I would boil all the shrimp up and I would bag these things up, uh, 50 to a bag. Mm. And the next day I would go out and sell them on the docks, uh, to all the tourists, uh, boat by boat, just knocking on, I had a little, um, little cart I had and everything made a little sign, you know, it was really cheesy. I got pictures of it, but it's really funny. <laughs> and, uh, ended up, uh, just going boat to boat and selling my shrimp for $2 and 50 cents a bag. And, and I really just, it, it was kind of like that. I, I loved it. You know, I just saved every penny I had. And so then the next year I did another little business, but what it, really where things, um, changed for me, I moved off the Island Mm-hmm. And I didn't come from a wealthy family. So, you know, the Marina and everything, that was my stepdad who basically got laid off in a job and bought a Marina as fantasy and filed chapter 11 down the road, you know, but bottom line is, uh, I didn't come from a wealthy family. I moved off the Island and I got a job at 15 years old because that's what you do on the Island. Right. Mm-hmm. And I found a company that, uh, washed trucks, a uh, big, just like a mobile truck washing company got that job. I loved it. I like, you know, I wanted to fix up my vehicle. So everything I did was I poured all all my energy just so I could fix up a truck that that I had bought. And I would work every weekend at 430 in the morning on the uh, like two days out of the week. And I just really took to this and I took leadership roles, you know, like by the time I was 16, I was running this guy's business for him and he had never had anybody do that. And I would come (laughs) in at 430 in the morning on a Saturday, get the truck ready, go pick up all my friends, you know, that worked for us. There's about three guys. I'd knock on the door. They're all drunk and everything, knocking, you know, waking their parents up. But I took it as, you know, this is my business. I didn't take it as this is my job, right? And even though it wasn't my business. So I just had that mentality from day one. And it wasn't until my junior year in high school that I was like, man, I'm not going to college. I freaking hate school. Yeah. I, I don't stay, <laughs> you know, focused on it. <laughs> and so I was like, um, I knew how valuable I was. And this is where I always teach people, you know, it's like, listen, uh, become so valuable at your job that you create so many opportunities for yourself if you just do that. Right. And this is what I, and opportunities will just come to you and you don't even have to really work at it. And I knew I was so valuable that I told my, my, uh, boss at the time, I said, listen, man, I'm going to start a business out of high school. You know, I just want to let you know, so I won't be working for you. And I knew he was going to offer something. And right there, he said, well, why don't you buy into my business? And I'm like, <laughs> heck yeah, man. I, I said, I'm totally interested. So I had saved my money all through high school. I, you know, a Slurpee was like a, a big treat for myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I had about, you know, $15,000. This is back in 92. I had about $15,000 saved up, you know, was making five bucks an hour, eight bucks an hour. So it was a lot of saving. And I, um, I bought half his company when I graduated high school and it was rocking, man. I mean, it was a really awesome business and I realized I was a a natural salesperson. I got on the phone, started, you know, kicking butt, you know, just picking up accounts and I didn't realize that that was going to be my role, but it kind of morphed into it because natural, I think progression of anything in life, right? You just kind of gravitate towards whatever you're good at and grew that company really fast and had about 13 employees. Starting get started to get to a point where I didn't need to even go to you know like go out with the guys anymore, and mm-hmm. so we thought we were so smart and could do nothing wrong. And I thought, wow, I'm gonna I'm gonna start another business. I'm gonna start a retail store selling all this industrial equipment and mail order business and everything. And went and got a, a bank loan, an SBA bank loan, and I ended up um, uh, starting this business. And I call it my four year college education. Cause that is where I learned how to fail. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was huge for me. And, and I realized that, um, the next time I was in business, I was going to get a consultant and somebody that taught me how to do something right versus just trying to do, figure it all out on your own. And that was starting a business. So bottom line is, uh, failed on that deal, found a business broker to sell my business 
sold one of my companies, paid off all my debt. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go buy a business. I don't know what I want, but I'm going to go buy something. And the business broker found me an auto repair shop. And I'm not a mechanic. I know nothing about fixing cars, but he just thought it would be a good fit for me because of my personality and everything. And so, and my work ethic. And so I was like, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot. And uh, ended up being the best decision I ever made in my life. I still own it today. I bought it in 2000 and it was, it's just been a, a cash flow machine for me. I mean, I worked there for about a year um, and then I wanted to become, actually I fell in love with the, the job of the business broker and I became a business broker a year later and became an absentee owner. So this business cash flows me, you know, $200,000 a year plus every year since I bought it in, in 2000. And I always look at it this way. It's the money you put in the business, right? As, as the down payment is your investment. So my investment was $90,000 and I'm making 200,000, 250 a year for the last 17, 18 years. You want me to stop? <laughs> no, I mean, no, no, no. We're, we, you've given me so much. We're going to go in so many different directions. This is going to be fun. <laughs> uh, so, but first I, I must uncover something. Did you say okay. 50 shrimp per bag for $2 and 50? I know, cents? right? Dude, I'm sitting there going <laughs> like, I had a, you know how much I saved up by the end of the summer? I can remember it today, you know, $130. That's it, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the whole summer. <laughs> But you know what, man, it wasn't, it was all about like, I mean, I had little marketing pieces I do and all kinds of stuff in fifth grade. I was 11 years old. That's My kids, amazing. you know, 12, you never do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You tell them like, what? You're lazy. Get out there. Do something. Make something happen. Now, for those you of you who are sensitive than that, well, well, <laughs> these <you> days, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes it depends on my mood, you know, <laughs> it depends yeah. on my mood. Um, for those of you wondering, it, because I, I was curious, uh, $15,000 in today's dollars, for those of you who care about things like inflation, we're talking $26,815 and uh, $15 and 52 cents. So imagine wow. trying to save that is what in high school, cause that's, that's really, really important is that the mindset, but there's a question or there's something that you said that's really intriguing to me. Cause I gotta know, how did you have the self awareness to know that you didn't need or belong in college? Cause well, that's, that's unique at that age. Yeah. Um, you know, I went with my, my gut, right. I mean, I think the gut tells you all. And I know that I pretty much cheated my way through most classes. I just copied people's <laughs> paperwork and like, I was the best cheater you'd ever meet probably. Uh, but you know, it just wasn't for me. I didn't enjoy it. It didn't, I didn't see it, um, making money from going to college. I loved money at that time. I was really obsessed with it almost. And I just wanted to make money and buy things and, and have to op create opportunities for myself and not, not go through the, the, the studies, you know, to try to teach you something. Okay. So on that point, you just said you, you, you loved money and you wanted to buy things, but yet you wouldn't allow you, you I mean, a Slurpee was like a treat. You, you clearly, there was something going on there because it sounds like you didn't really buy much. No, you're right. I mean, I, I, um, bought big things, right? So like I bought my first truck at 15 years old before I even had a driver's license, you know? So I wanted to buy big things. I was always like that person that didn't, I didn't need the video games or whatever little things here and there to keep me going. I just wanted the, the money to be able to buy that one big thing when it came time that I needed to buy something, I had the money to do it. Got it. That makes a ton of sense. Now, there's a skill set that you've mentioned that I 100% believe that everybody, myself included, every person on this planet needs more practice at. And it was simply, you said you learned how to fail. Now, I, I fundamentally believe that athletes and, and, and artists tend to have an advantage in that area because that's mm. kind of what they do on a daily basis. You know, they so tried true. to play, didn't go well. They tried to play the music, didn't go well. They tried the painting, didn't go well, but they tried it again the next day. What I would love to hear you expound upon is some of the thoughts around, I mean, many people would like, I went, I got the SBA loan. I got all this stuff mentally. What was the mental state like as you're going through that? Were you going, you know what? This is just another lesson on the way. Or did it feel differently during that process? Well, I'll just tell you a quick backstory on it. So when I was getting that SBA loan, I had a banker, right? And the banker said, you know, we had this truck wash company that was making us profit, right? And we wanted to borrow $135,000. And the banker says to me, he says, Okay, we're going to loan you guys this $135,000, mm -hmm. but we know you're going to fail. But the only reason we're going to loan you this money is because you 
have a business that's profitable enough to make the loan payment if you do fail. I wanted to freaking kill the dude. I, w- I, re- I was ready to punch him, man. Hold on, hold on. He off. said that like before giving you the money? Yes, yes. But I must say it was something that stuck with me and I, and I ran into the guy years later. But anyways, that's another story. But <sighs> well, I ran into I, I basically... Oh man, dude. It, it, and I was like that mother, you know, I'm like, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to prove him wrong. Right. right and right. so once I got into this thing, um, and I, you know, years, a couple of years went by, I started realizing how difficult this was, you know, to be, to make money. And I'm like, wow, I really don't know things, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty self-aware person. So I, I'm, I'm looking at my failures going, you know, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, but it's not working, you know, and, and I, I obviously don't know something here. And so it was just to the point where I didn't see it at the light at the end of the tunnel. And I told my business partner, I said, man, I'm, I'm out, you know, like I just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel and I want to just go do something else. And luckily I'd bought some money and uh, I, I bought some stocks in uh, Qualcomm. <laughs> made oh. some money during the time when well, I took a go. huge pay cut during that four years, you know, but I still was investing in things during that time, which allowed me to buy another business. Got, so, it. Yeah. Got it. Now there's another skill set that you mentioned that, um, not everybody considers to be a skill set, but I would venture to say that as an entrepreneur, it's, it's chief for success. In fact, you said you eventually hired a consultant, but more importantly, you you said you you were cheating and copying others' work, but wouldn't you say that that's a necessary thing that every entrepreneur needs to do today? Hey, man, I hate to advocate it, but dude, like, I mean, look at Bill Gates. He copied the whole program and became richer than anyone out there, right? I mean, it's it's all about, you don't need to invent things. You don't need to do your own, you know, 100% your own thing. You, you can do things better, right? So everything I do in all my businesses, I'm always looking out and seeing how other people are doing things and going, wow, I really like what they're doing over there. I'm going to implement that in my business. So I do the little things like that. I'm just a logical thinker. And and I make decisions based off of that and like what I see around me. Okay. Now I'm 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 ready to start talking about the stuff that I'm excited about because you know the this you have done the very thing that I personally have never been able to figure out. I, I figure out how to create cash flow literally from nothing. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. pretty decent there. That's I awesome, have man. Not been able to successfully figure out I have tried. And so here's the list that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, I have tried to buy laundromats. I've tried to buy yogurt shops. I've tried to buy like Jiffy Lube and quick serve or quick change oil restaurant, uh, quick change oils. I was looking at, uh, I think it was Farmer Brothers franchise. Uh, I've looked at, I mean, I could keep going. This is, mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> there is a long list. Of, hey, honey, let's buy one of these. And she's like, yeah, that's great. And then I start going down that process and I'm just like, this due diligence, this, this whole thing. And I'm just like, how do, how do, and then, then comes the, how do I not end up in the store? How do I, I I don't know how to do that. So I don't, I end up stopping because I can't figure out how to make sure that I, like my current business with, with short term rentals, we have a portfolio of short term rentals. Literally takes me 90 minutes a day, if that. Mm-hmm. to to continually run those and 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 it's you know many millions of dollars it's pretty cool 90 minutes a day i like it i don't ever want to destroy that lifestyle ability and i haven't figured it out but you have so now we've got lots of questions oh boy <laughs> because <laughs> i i got to know specifically because you did mention the auto repair shop i'm like hmm interesting okay how how do you do this how does one just Find the right business, make it such that they don't get trapped inside of it and and continually buy more of them. Because that sounds great to me. Beautiful question. And that's what my whole system's all about, right? So I've been a business broker for the last 17 years and I've seen it all, you know, most like what you all, all everything you listed, I'm gonna tell you right now, yeah. is the reason why you've walked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, honestly, man, it. like I'm not going to say that some of them can't be successful, but you know, people buy those, all these businesses for the wrong reasons. And I already know your reason, right? Your yeah. reason is, oh, 
laundromat. Oh, you know, I can do that part time at absentee and it's just going to make money for me. And it's just machines. People put quarters in it and then this and that. Right. And there's no work involved. Well, yeah, okay. that's definitely yeah. part of it. Of course. But, but as a as because we do short term rentals, I, the amount and sheer volume of laundry that we do is insane. So I was well, like, you should. Well, that would have been a great strategic buy. Right. See, that would have been a really good strategic buy for you. So maybe you should have considered that one. But if you're just looking at a cash flow basis. Yes, that was the original idea yeah and um so maybe reevaluate that way that one after this interview <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm down no. for change I, I love it all the time yeah hello there entrepreneur this is jay massey and what i want to say to you is that the number one mistake that i have ever made in business number one has been waiting too long to do the books, waiting too long to get the bookkeepers, the accountants, the CPAs, the CFOs involved, and I don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me over six figures, and now for a significant discount, you have the ability to get your books together using Fresh Books. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Again, that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Fresh Books is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. All right. So let me just tell you, okay, um, a lot. I I, I don't recommend people get into franchises for one thing, because think about it this way. Um, Yeah, you're buying it. You you think it's secure and they're going to train you to do all these things. And the rude awakening is they don't really take a lot of time to train you to do anything. And now you're spending 8% to 10% and royalties and whatever else that they charge you, Mm -hmm. um, that you could be putting that same money into a manager running your business. So it it doesn't mean because you buy a franchise, you're going to be more successful. You're actually going to probably be less successful and you're going to work harder at the business because now you have to be an employee to the business a lot of times, unless you get your revenues to to add a a level that now you can afford all that. But that takes even, you know, major growth in those kind of industries like, you know, yogurt and stuff like that. I mean, there's things you can do with it. But I say, you know, what I like to do is I like to go for businesses that are uh, more like on the service side of businesses. Hmm. And I look at things when I'm buying a business or I'm I'm recommending it to people. There's, there's websites you can go on like businessbroker.net. Mm-hmm. Go on there and we teach people, you know, how to look at a good business and, and how to evaluate to see if it's worth buying. And part of that process, I mean, it depends on your time, right? You know, everybody has um, different amounts of time in a business. But if you're just talking about, hey, I want to I want to create a, a lifestyle business as quick as possible, right? You're going to find that you want to look at. Um, the revenues in that business and make sure they're at a level high enough that you can afford eventually to hire a manager to run that business. And it has the cash flow, the owner's discretionary income to be able to pay yourself, pay the loan and pay a manager to run that business. Okay. So, now that well, so, okay. But you're getting to one of the points because here's what, mm-hmm. here's one of the things I remember specifically when I was looking at the laundromat and the, the yogurt shop, this is where, this is where things got stuck. When I was asking the, the, the current owner for their books, there was like, it, it was not exactly in the best of shape. Let's just put it that way. And the laundromat was by far the worst, like I, trying to verify their, their revenues and income to figure out it, that very thing was like, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, I've got garbage information here. Yeah. Like, how does that, how have you dealt with that? Welcome to my world. <laughs> so basically, what I'm going to tell you right now, tell your listeners this. If you're going to look at buying a business, um, what you want to do is find some things out there that look interesting to you. Reach out to uh, the listing on these sites like businessbroker.net, businessesforsale.com, and you're going to get a broker that contacts you. 
obviously you want to make sure that you connect with that broker enough, but they'll send you information on this business. And if that information is even kind of difficult to understand, because and I'm not talking about if you, if you really don't know how to read financials, but I mean, if it's like what you're saying here, you know, I was trying to figure it out. I know how to read a financial statement or I, I get the general idea of it, but I'm just not able to even see where this money's at that they're talking about. I mean, especially like gross revenues, right? The right. most simple part. That's all I was after. I, walk, I wasn't even away. trying to. Yeah, walk away. Those are junk, man. Those are junk listings and uh, junk businesses. And I don't, I, you know, I don't recommend even even spending more than five minutes on it if it looks like that. Trying to get them to give you stuff because a good business and a good broker is going to have all that information for you in tax returns, profit and loss statements, and then they're going to do something called recasting the numbers, which is basically just looking at all the, you know, adding back anything that's personal or amortization or depreciation interest, things that are unique to the seller. And they're going to add that all into a spreadsheet. And you're going to see really simply, oh, this business makes me, if I were to buy this business for cash, I can, I can pay myself $100,000 a year. That, that's how simple it is. So then, then you start doing your calculations around that, whether or not you can run it as an absentee or, or, or not, but um, every business can become an absentee type business ownership, no more than maybe five hours a week working in it within a 12 month period. Now, and now you're speaking my language because that, that's exactly the world that I, that's the world I'm used to. And I have no desire to change that <laughs> whatsoever. And you should, man. Uh, yeah. But here's the, the next challenge with that uh, often becomes, not not just understanding the the numbers per se, but there's it seemed and again it just seemed arbitrary to me, and maybe it's too much real estate negotiations in my background. But there's it's always you know I've, I've got to be able to base it on something. But there was always this mystical number multiple that this is what it's worth. Like, yeah, says who <laughs> based on <laughs> what? <laughs> You, hey, he says the Wild West business brokers, man. Like, you, that's how it works. Rule right. of thumb. <laughs> I, I, I just had troubles with that often and over again. So how, how do we deal with that one? Well, the cool thing is I'm going to send you my book. So then you can <laughs> up on this stuff and you're going to actually learn exactly how it's done. But it, there is no exact science to it. Um, you know, typically speaking, um, let's say a, a, maybe a business that might cash flow uh, under $100,000 may only have about a two time uh, multiplier. Okay. If it's over a hundred thousand dollars, now it's going to get up to like a three time multiplier. And if it's maybe got a uh, $300,000, uh, owner's discretionary income, it might go as high as four or five, depending on industries too. So it's going to be between two and five. And you know, it's going to be in those run uh, numbers, unless it's some crazy, awesome, you know, business out there. But most all businesses are selling between two and five times, but really small business, usually under a couple million dollars, is going to be selling for two to three times owner's discretionary income. Got it. OK, well, that that makes me feel better for sure, because some of the I mean, you know, like I know the numbers are crazy. They're out there and you're just like, really? Like because of that that's just, you know, I'm always asking based upon what? Where did that idea come from? Like, how did you arrive at that number? Because that's not the number I'm arriving at. <laughs> um, and, and everything's negotiable. Well, uh, good. Now, the, which is the next piece that I, I, I at least that I kept running into was. I knew that, for example, because you mentioned the auto repair shop piece, uh -huh. I know, I know, I barely know where the gas goes, right, Um, in inside of a vehicle. I am not ever going to be the guy that knows much about an auto repair shop and how to run the day to day. So I was always looking for, at least I thought it was smart, and maybe it's not, to try to negotiate for the existing owner to stay on board for a little while so that we could either hire or train or something to someone to to help make that happen. Is that a normal thing? Or is that a no thing for you? Um, OK, for me, it's a no thing personally, because I, I always have a conflict um, with the, the seller because they're wanting to get out. They've been running that business maybe for 10, 20, 30 years. They got mm -hmm. their ideas of how you want, they want things you know done. And then you start changing a, thing, a few things here and there. And then they start getting uh, confrontational and it, it's just, it's not always the best way, but you know, if you can outline exactly what you're looking for and it's a temporary basis for somebody like yourself who, who does investments in real estate and really you, you have very, very little time to do anything. Um, it's not, it's not a bad idea. Right. But what I do, mm -hmm. uh, a good example, I have a business I, I bought not that long ago. It was like last August. And 
I mean, it just kind of fell in my lap, but this guy calls me up and says, Hey Aaron, you know, I want to, um, you know, I got to sell my business. My son passed away who was running my business. And I, I can't, I'm 80 years old, man. I can't run this auto shop. <laughs> right. And, and I said, okay, well, you know, I'll buy it from you. And he was a friend from the past. And so I paid him full price, $550,000, didn't even negotiate anything. And I looked at it and I said, okay, well, I just have to get a manager in here. And what do I have to work with right now within the company that maybe I can bring some people up uh, in that company, existing company right now or existing uh, employees and put them into the management role that they weren't in before. So I first looked at that and mm -hmm. you can always, you can always do that and find somebody at least temporarily to run your business that already works there. And then that's going to be a huge morale thing. You know, everyone's gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, I'm new owner, but wow, I love, I love this guy. He's giving me opportunities. So that's what I did. I ended up buying this business, $550,000. I put down 10%, mm -hmm. $55,000. And the first year I owned that business, I didn't put in more than, I, I would say maybe like 20 hours the entire year of my time. Mm -hmm. And I made $168,000. That's a 300% return on my money from the first year. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make no, way more impressive. than that this year. Yeah, so, well, I, yeah, no. because you've got the loan and stuff paid down. I, I get it. But what's going through my head is you, you must have some exceptional skill at finding, hiring, or training people. Well, you know, it is, it, it's something that you have to, it, it's trial and error, right? I mean, I don't yeah, ever, yeah. no, I, I don't, I mean, dude, I'll, I've hired hundreds of employees and I, I, it's like, you just put them in until they work. And even in that place, I mean, I had to get rid of like seven people and hire them. I mean, it was hard, you know, like there was things that you had to do, but you just keep doing it until you get them. And so it's not like, you don't have to have this super skill. You just have to have a, a somewhat of a, I see. a sensor, you know, to, to know if somebody's good or not, you know, like, I mean, as far as a good person, right. And, sure. and has some experience in the industry that you're hiring for. Now, uh, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're having to go into a business and maybe even rework their SOPs in some way, shape or form? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, businesses mostly aren't run very well. And <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's why I bought them. I got it. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I do see that potential in them a lot of times. And that's why, honestly, why I wrote the book and, and we have this academy called the Lifestyle Business Owner Academy. And it, it's it's teaching people step by step how to take a business that doesn't have good systems in place and put them into place and how to hire employees. I mean, you, you asked me about hiring employees. I mean, it's, I have videos on how to do that. Right. Okay. And you just got to go down the, down the steps of, of doing that. And some businesses do take longer than others. <laughs> no doubt. Now here, here's the question. Um, if someone had the desire uh, hypothetically speaking, but really talking about me, um, if someone had the desire to not just build locally, but actually wanted to provide jobs, say, you know, I live in California, but families in North Carolina and Florida, um, is that would your system be able to function in that area as well? Oh, heck yeah, man. I mean, it doesn't matter where you're at. And yeah. it, it's funny. You always have these people. Well, I can't do that here. It's different. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's <laughs> not different anywhere. It's the same deal. You just don't have the right mindset and you're not doing the right things. So you can do it anywhere, man. Yeah. And that's what I like about it. Uh, you, it's still the location independence that I crave, time freedom that I, I absolutely must have. But yet it's a diversified income play yep. that allows me to continue to do all the other things that I like to do, providing jobs, buying more real estate, et cetera. And I, I have a question. Why, why did you feel the need to actually write the book and build the academy? Great question. Uh, what it really comes down to is selling businesses for the last 17 years and seeing these owners of businesses and even the people buying businesses where they're like, and they basically just buy themselves a job or they they own a job where they have to work in it every day, 40 to 70 hours a week. They hate ownership. I wanted to create something where people love business ownership and they go, wow, it's cool. Like, yeah, employees are challenging, but we deal with it and it's not that big of a deal. And we love employees because they run our business and I don't have to. So I wanted to empower small business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs to do it right from the beginning, if they're if you're just getting into it, and to help you become more efficient and profitable if you currently own a business, 
because I'm sick and tired of the big ass box stores uh, and these big corporations uh, taking out all these small little businesses. We're losing so much customer service in our society now, and I'm tired of it. And I want to empower these small business owners to be better. Indeed. And I love and I can hear the, the the frustration, the passion, the desire, the look. Come on, guys, we can do this in your voice. Yep. <laughs> so I like it. Now, for some people listening, though, because the conversation that you and I have been having, they're probably listening and going, well, I, I'm not Jay. Uh, I'm not Aaron. I, I can't just go like, you know, even if it's only 10 percent down, I, I don't have it. What what have you seen in terms of uh, deal structures or what, what's been like, what's been the, the barrier to entry, uh, when it comes to, on a financial level? And then what do you see as the actual barrier to entry for people from actually starting or this process of buying their own business? Well, I mean, maybe I just take a step back on that question because, you know, for that, that, um, objection that people have, I don't have 10%, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is where I talk about, uh, working somewhere and becoming so valuable that they cannot lose you in that in that small business or that you're working for in, right. in something maybe you like and want to do. And now you have an opportunity to even own part of the business you work for if you do that. And so those are the people that don't have any money. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, I sold uh, cars for a month and a half. There's one job I had all my life. Uh, and it was all special credit, bad credit people. And one thing I learned in that time was that everybody can come up with money if they need to come up with money. They always tell you, I don't got any, I got like $200. Next thing you know, by the time they're walking out, they just gave me $10,000 cash. I'm like, whoa, what the <laughs> hell, man? You borrow money from somebody, got it. So people can get money, man. It's just like, you got to put your mind to it and make it happen. Agreed 100%. And, and work hard, save for a while until you get the money to do it. But, you know, barrier entry, minimum is 10%, you know, usually to buy a business with a bank loan is why I say that. But, you know, it's 25% they require, but the seller will finance sometimes up to 15%. So there's elements that you, you know, there's all kinds of ways to structure a deal. That's what's so great. It's the wild, that's why they call the business brokerage world the wild west of real estate, because there is no rules, man. I mean, you can like, you can do a deal all kinds of different ways. Indeed. Uh, totally. And that was part of the stuff that got me excited about it was because I can apply my creativity to figuring out how to buy it. I, I, I just always got stuck at the places that I, I told you about before. Now, there's a number of people who have been listening this far and uh, they're intrigued. They want to know more. They they probably want to. <laughs> they're thinking to themselves, yes, finally, somebody who knows how to make this happen. Uh, what's going to be the best way for them to find out more about what you got going on and track you down? Well, a um, couple places, you know, you can always get the book, The Lifestyle Business Owner. It's on Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble going to your stores, anywhere like that. But if you want to like um, get some free videos, go to lifestylebusinessowner.com. That's lifestylebusinessowner.com. And you're going to get some free videos just talking about how to buy a, a business, make it run without you and make a six figure income. Um, and our entire website's at thelifestylebusinessowner.com. Excellent. Now, as we wrap up here, I have a final question for you because I'm really interested to hear uh, what your your response. So let's pretend for a second, Aaron, that, uh, you know, somebody's listening right now and they, they're they probably have moved to a, a point of the decision they're, They've listened to you and myself right now. They hear the excitement. They want to do it. They've thought about becoming a business owner. They are standing even what I like to say. They're standing in front of the superhero outfit store. They are ready. <laughs> to make this happen. Now, you know, like I know, when you uh, get to these moments of decisions, there's often another partner right there. And it usually comes in the form of a voice. And it reminds us of how last time it didn't work. And it says things like, oh, who are you to actually try? I mean, really, you're going to do this? Are you sure? And, and for some people, they're even related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that that person this time is actually going to follow through. They're going to follow through in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do? They're, they need to go to uh, businessbroker.net, businessesforsale.com, and start looking at businesses and determining, first off, what do you have to make to survive? Not what you want to make to survive, <laughs> but what do you have to make to survive? 
then that's one way you're going to narrow down your search, start looking at these different companies out there because it'll show you what the cash flow of that business is, right? And then you have to take into account loans and things like that. But anyways, when you're when you're doing it, um, you, you look at what you have to make and then you also think about like what kind of background do I have? You know, if I'm just a, an operations guy, well, you can buy tons of different businesses. If I'm just a marketing guy, I can do tons of different businesses. But if I'm an engineer or somebody that's just a numbers person, now you got to like narrow it down a little bit because you're not going to a lot of times be able to see a bigger picture of what can be done in a business. So you kind of fit your personality. And that's why we always use the Myers-Briggs. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but Mm -hmm. it's a great way of matching people up and how to show them different businesses. Nice. I I like it a lot. And I definitely uh, appreciate your experience. I I appreciate your street forwardness i appreciate the being the example and uh more importantly being willing to share your knowledge your wisdom your insight here with us today at the cashflow diary sir well thank you so much man i really appreciate you all right ladies and gentlemen you know what time it is it's time for you to move at the speed of instruction what does that mean that means get over to lifestylebusinessowner.com again that's lifestylebusinessowner.com why Because you know you heard something that got you excited. You know that you were hoping that this was going to be one of those episodes that just kept on going. Well, the way you keep on going is you get over to lifestylebusinessowner.com. You go over to those websites he mentioned and you begin this process today. Because you know today is the only day that you have. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.